All right, so we've got our paper CubeSat bus. We've got a little platform that we can build whatever mission we like on. Now it's time to actually give our spacecraft a mission to do. And we're gonna start by replicating one of the very first space missions ever. We're gonna get our CubeSat to send a message back to us. That's pretty much the same message that Sputnik 1, the very first spacecraft had. All it had to do was go to space and send a message back saying, hey, here I am, I'm in space. Um, and that's also pretty much the same mission that Binar 1 had as well. We sent it up into space and it sent back a message uh, saying, hey, I'm in space, hello world, uh, and blinking its call sign back to us. So to do that, we're gonna to need to add a couple of components to our circuit. The first thing we're gonna to need to add is something to store our message and control our circuit. And for that, we're gonna use a little component called a microcontroller. So what a microcontroller lets us do basically is control whether or not and how much electricity is coming out of these little pins based on some code that we can install on there and also on whether or not there's electricity and how much electricity is coming into those pins as well. So what that lets us do is turn different bits of our circuit on or off and up and down based on what other parts of our circuit are doing, whether or not they're turned up or down or on or off as well. So it lets us use sensors and send signals. So for today, we're just gonna put our message in there and get it to uh, blink that message back to us. And what we're gonna use to do that isn't necessarily a, uh, a radio device because we don't wanna go to all the hassle of setting up a radio just to get our uh, first little blinky message back. Instead, we're gonna use the electromagnetic receivers we have built into our body and we're gonna use an LED to send some visible light rather than radio waves back to us. So it's exactly the same kind of uh, signal as we would get over the radio. It's just a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum. To show us how to connect these up into our CubeSat, we're gonna head back over to the lab and have a chat to Jacob. So what we're doing today, we're gonna to be powering our microcontroller. All right. And we're gonna make the microcontroller do things Thing. What things is up to your imagination, but my imagination today says we're going to blink an LED. Okay, that's a good, that sounds like a good start. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Starting with the circuit we had last week. Slightly rearranged from where we finished because we need a little bit more space to work with. So if yours is spread out, try and move it to one side and then we'll move that out of the way and we'll go to our data sheet. And we're going to, first of all, look at the pin configuration page. This is page two of the data sheet. This is for this little guy. And we've actually positioned them. You'll see on the data sheet here, the, uh, the rectangle with the four pins on either side is exactly the same as how this little guy sits. So the first thing we wanna look at is which pin is pin one, because the pins have individual functions on them. So for instance, pin four here is ground and pin eight is our input voltage. So we need to work out which pin corresponds to each one on this chip. Obviously this chip is symmetrical to the left and right. So if you were to spin it around, it looks exactly the same. The thing about the chip that we indicate where pin one is, is on the chip, if you look very closely, so you can see the little dot next to pin one there reflecting in the light. So that indicates which pin is pin one. And that is the same for every single integrated circuit. Every single one will have a dot that indicates pin one. So the things we wanna know here is we wanna know where the power and ground go, and we want to know which pin we want to have our functions go into and out of. We've got our little chip. We need the LED itself, and the LED has two pins on it. An LED stands for light emitting diode, light emitting diode, LED. So on the actual symbol of an LED, LED has an input, goes to like a triangle with a line, goes to an output, which has the two arrows to indicate the light comes out of it. And this line you can tell on a polarized component, the line indicates that it blocks flow of electricity from the other way, so that will not flow backwards which is what this component is called. It's called a uh, pol polarized component. Mm -hmm. So you can only put it in one way. And if you put it in backwards, it won't turn on. In addition to that, we need a resistor. And that resistor is what's called a current limiting resistor. And what this does is it limits the amount of current that passes through this LED. If you didn't have this resistor, the LED would just draw as much current as it possibly could because the resistance of this in the circuit is so low that the, uh, the voltage would cause a huge amount of current to go through it. And the way you can work that out is a formula called Ohm's law. So Ohm's law is V is equal to I times R. In this case, V equals voltage. I is current and R is resistance. Uh -huh. So the first thing first, we're gonna put the microcontroller in the board. Uh, and to remember, 
that when we're connecting things on our breadboard, the five pins that go across ways, those are connected together electrically, uh -huh. and then there's a gap, and then these five are connected. So if we put chips in, if we were to put the chip in like this, it would connect all the pins together, and we don't want to do that. Yeah, that seems bad. So the way we want to put this in, again, if we were to put it in like this, it would connect the pins together across. We also don't want to do that, because it's going to short the pins out. But we have this convenient little we have a convenient valley gap down the middle. That's sized exactly right for fitting the chip onto it, because it was designed to. <laughs> So we can click that in. Very satisfying pushing that one into the breadboard. Nice. The next thing to do is we're going to place our LED. So we want to place our LED in so that the legs are crossways. And the other thing we can look at is to remember which side of the LED has got a flat on it. You can feel it with your finger. There's a flat on one side. That indicates the cathode. Right. That's the negative side of the LED. So, so should when we put we get our, our resistor straight in? Yep. We'll put our resistor in next. So the resistor needs to connect in the same row as the flat of the LED, the cathode, yep. and that goes to its next row. So we'll just bend our legs down so that they're vertical, and then we'll plug that in. So we'll connect a wire from the resistor, and that connects to the same bunch of wires that is the ground, where it's just the black wire on our battery connector. So that will go down and connect into this bunch of wires over here. So now we've got our little circuit connected to the ground. The next thing we want to do is we want to connect our microcontroller power and ground. So in this case, the way I've set it up, I've got the dot to the left side, which means that pin one is the left side of the chip on facing me. So that lines up exactly like that. So the next thing to do is to connect the power to the microcontroller. So that will use our brown wire from before, which was our power output. And that goes to pin eight of the microcontroller, which will be the one furthest left away from us if you've oriented the pin one on your left towards you, the same way I have. So we can take that wire and we can plug it into the pin just like that. So the second thing to do now is to connect the ground, which is pin four. So if you've got the chip oriented with the dot towards you, that will be the furthest right pin on your side of the board. So we can connect that. And that pin goes to the same bank that we've connected all the other grounds to, which is the black wire of the battery clip. So that will go into that row again. OK. So now we've got power, ground, we've got our LED. There's one thing we're missing. Do we need to connect our LED to the chip, because right, exactly right now it's not do. connected, it's yep. just off on its own over here. Yep. The reason why I haven't connected this yet is we need to decide which one of these pins we're going to be using as our LED output. Any one of these pins that have a PB on them, that indicates that they're a GPIO. So PB 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, those are referenced in software as pin 0, pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin 4, and pin 5. Right. Yep. So any one of those we can turn on or off exactly. with code. Exactly. Any, any one of those okay. can be a GPIO. The thing we need to consider is that when we start doing things in the future where we're looking at specific pins, uh, when we look at, say, doing our analog input, we're reading from our temperature sensor, mm -hmm. that's going to require, free. if we decide to use analog input zero, that will require us to use PB zero. So we can't also use PB zero as an output. They right. can only do one thing at once. Okay. So for this, we are limited to six pins. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial here, I'm going to choose pin zero. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is PB0 here, which is pin 5. But basically the way we're going to look at that here is we're going to connect our connect wire. That's going to go from the positive lead of the LED. We go right next to that resistor. And that is going to go to pin 0, which if we line that up again, that's the one furthest right away from us on the board. So if you want to plug that in. And all the way out in this row. Yep. All right. Awesome. So now we've got our circuits set up. What we're going to do now, however, is we're going to unplug the chip and we're going to program it. All right. So we've got this little guy here. That is your programming board. Mm -hmm. We can see on the programming board there's like a little white drawing that has a, a notch in the end. The plug, like the, uh, the chip holder, also has a notch. And it also has the pins labelled on there. So if we look at it um, close, we can see a positive and a negative um, on the actual the actual board, so the, the positive and negative is marked in the what's called the silk screen, the white. In order to not completely destroy the chip when we take it out of the breadboard, finger and thumb, both ends of the chip, and then you just squeeze and pull straight up. Squeeze and pull straight up. It takes a little bit of practice. Once you get good at it, you can just take it straight out with uh, minimal bending. And then that chip, again, pin one, goes towards the notch. We want to try and line it up so it's nice and flat. Then we just push straight down so that it's in the slot. Nice. So then we plug this guy into... Into the USB port. Now into we're going USB to program. port. So we're going to start with a blank sketch. Now what we want to do... Yeah. 
So we have two variables. We have, uh, and the way we're going to set these up is we're going to go int, which means integer, int, space, and then we're going to use our variable name. So we're going to say um, LED will be our first pin, and that will be the pin that we are putting on. And we've chosen pin 0 from the data sheet. We chose PB0, so that will just be equal to 0. And then we put at the end of it a semicolon, and what that does is it tells us at the end of the line there's no more to read. And then the next line down, INT. So for this we're going to call this one uh, delay. See how it's gone orange? That because delay is picked up as a function. Right, so we can't just use delay. We that's, can't just use delay. So we're going to call this special. delay time. And our delay time, we're going to set that to be 500 milliseconds. That is half a second. Okay. And now we go into our void setup. So this runs at the start of the program. This is where we define what the pin is doing that we've selected. Right. So because we want to output a voltage to the LED, the pin is an output. Okay. So we need to use a function called pin mode, yep. which is pin, M-O-D-E, pin mode. See, it's picked it up as a function because it's gone orange. This is what defines the mode that our pin is running in. And there's a couple of modes we can run. The most important, well, the two that we're going to be focusing on is pin mode input and pin mode output. Right. So for this, we have pin mode. We press an open bracket and we say LED, which defines our pin. Mm -hmm. And then we go press caps lock and we type output, E-U-T, P-U-T. And that's gone blue because that's picked up output. And we remember, always add a semicolon to the end of the line once we're done. So now we go into our loop means that this software will just keep looping over and over and over. Once it gets to the end, it will go back to the start and start again. Right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to do what's called a digital write function. Digital is like an on or off. Mm -hmm. It's like a light switch, so it's a one or a zero. Right. And we want to do a digital write to our output pin. Right. So we're turning our pin on and off. Yep. Yep. Right. So we want to go digital write. See how it's gone orange now? It's picked that up as a function. Digital write LED. And then we want to turn that on, so we'll type in high. So high in this case is 1, it's on, it's 5 volts, the high voltage, and we put a colon at the end of that. Okay. And now we want it to be turned on. We want to be able to see it. We don't want to just turn off immediately. So this is where we want to put in a delay. Right. So that it stays on for a period of time. Okay. And funnily enough, the function for delay is just called delay. As we saw earlier when we tried to type in delay time. just use delay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So now we want to go delay, delay time and what that does is this calls the delay function and gives it the value delay time and it goes and looks up up the top there looks up how big delay time is and plugs that into the function exactly okay yeah now if we were to just have this run like this it would just be on forever the code would be running fine but we're not telling it to turn off ever let me guess we're going to we're going to digital write led low exactly we're going to turn it off so we do exactly the same thing again. We go digital write LED, and this time we want to type in low. And what that does is that turns off the pin. And then, because we don't want it to be turned off for a split second, just an instant, mm -hmm. we add in another, another delay, which is exactly the same again. Delay, delay, time. So what we can do here is we can save it. So we're just going to go File, and save as, and now we're going to call this one, let's call this uh, Blinky, and then we hit save. So we're going to go to Tools, and the next thing we want to do is we want to select our board. So we go to our hover over this, and we're going to go to the at tiny microcontroller, and we're going to select the at tiny 25, 45, 85, because we're using at tiny 85. And then we'll click on Tools again, and we want to make sure our processor says at tiny 85. It might be selected one of the different ones. Just make sure it says at tiny 85. And then we'll click on tools again. And we'll set our internal clock to 8 megahertz, which is the clock speed that the chip is running at. That's yep. from the data sheet. Right. Then the last thing to do is to click on tools and to select our programmer and make sure this says USB tiny ISP. And what that does is it means that our software knows that it's trying to program using our little red programmer board. It and should there's a, there is a full tutorial for getting this set up on a computer that I've linked in the description. We're not going to do the same thing on camera because that would be really boring. It's just us following a tutorial on camera. So if we I mean, can do it, you can do it. Probably you've already been set up by your teachers yeah. before you started. Yeah. So once we've got it set up, we can hit the upload button here, which is the one just to the left of the tick. And we should see a little green bar. 
That's the software done. The chip is now programmed. So cool. we can yoink that guy? Yoink it out. All Te done. Technical term there. Yep. So the next thing we want to do is, again, just line it up with the, uh, the pins that we had. Let's make sure it's the right way around. It's the right way up. Cool. Press down on the top. Boop. Slots in. All right. Done. All right. Plug the battery in. And... Off. And... The on again. That is the foundation <laughs> of every piece of embedded hardware. Blinking oh, wow. Blinking an LED is the most basic thing you can do. And whenever anyone gets a new embedded chip, first thing they try and do is blink an LED. All right, did you get all that? So we're going to start by connecting our microcontroller. And I've got a little cheat sheet here to remind us which... Uh, pins are which we need to connect that top right pin to our power so we're actually going to just pop that straight into the row that we know is getting five volts the next thing that we need to do is connect up our ground so we know that's the bottom left pin so we're going to drop this little bit of wire here in across this row here and we could use jumper cable as well but we're gonna use this one because it's a little bit neater. Gonna drop it across there, nice and neat. And then we're gonna bring that down. There's nothing else in that row, but we're gonna connect that down to the same row as the bottom left pin. There we go. The next thing we wanna do is connect up our blinky light, our uh, transmitter that's gonna send our signal. So when we did that in the lab, uh, we just connected it up on the breadboard uh, to pin zero. So that's uh, this bottom right pin here. What I'm gonna do, uh, just because we have a CubeSat to work with, is connect it up to the top of our <laughs> antenna, just for a bit of fun. So I'm gonna punch those uh, through the top of our antenna there. You could just tape it, but I'm feeling reckless. So I'm gonna punch it through there. We're gonna use a couple of jumper cables to connect that up to our blink pin, which is pin zero and to ground. So we're gonna chuck a red one on there down to our bottom right pin. And we're gonna connect this one to the other leg also through there. And that can go into any of our rows, which is connected to the ground, but I'm gonna connect it to this one here because uh, that's nice and easy. So before we seal our CubeSat up, we're just gonna give it a quick test and make sure that it is in fact working as expected. And there we go. All right, so this is the tricky part. One of the trickiest parts of working with CubeSats is because they're so small, it's really tough to fit everything in. Now this is one part where uh, our project is actually a little bit different to Binar. Uh, Binar isn't allowed to be switched on, other CubeSats as well aren't allowed to be switched on uh, before they launch. So we've got to build a whole system to make sure that uh, we're not powering up until we've been out of the space station for 30 minutes. So Binar would never be uh, assembled, switched on and blinking like this. And there we go, all sealed up and our antenna is blinking a message back to us. Now, so I've got a bit of a challenge for you. You might have noticed that our little Binar CubeSat here is a little papercraft spacecraft here is actually not just blinking on and off. It's actually blinking out in a pattern. And that's because I've changed the code on our microcontroller between uh, coming out of the lab and now. This is actually blinking a message back to us in a, an old fashioned type of uh, encoding called Morse code that just uses long and short blinks and the gaps between them to send a message. So I've got two challenges for you. The first one is to see if you can figure out what six letters our CubeSat is blinking back to us. And the second is to see if you can figure out how to modify the code on your microcontroller to blink a message in Morse code of your own. That's all for today. I will see you for our next mission.